So I feel like I need to qualify this Battletech video regarding house rules. This is just how I approach it. It is just a point of view. It is not a criticism. In terms of wargaming systems, I don't particularly believe in house rules. And the reason why I say that is the rules are not only a way to navigate a game. And yes, in any gaming system, I love Battletech. In any gaming system, there are rules that are intentionally well-written, but they might be a little bit clunky, or they might not fit every situation on there. But the rules are important because that is the expectation in the game. That is what gives you control, for good or bad, over your units. Um, as soon as you start to change the rules and you start to change things, it sets up for a point of view where another player wasn't expecting something, or they're not interpreting it differently, or this cascading effect where other aspects of the game change in unintentional ways. So normally I, I, I shy away from that. Now I should say building on that piece, and we're going to look at this idea of initiative sync, it's very, very important to understand that. Giving another player the benefit of the doubt, or if the rules are a little bit 50-50, you know what, let your opponent roll with it. So I'm all for interpreting rules in an honorable way. But, but changing them to house rule for whatever reason, I don't like to do that. A secondary reason with Battletech and other games that I enjoy is I like to go out to the community. I like the social aspects. I like and I try to play with a variety of people. So if we stick to the rules as written, even if they cause trouble here and there, I know from one group to another I can easily go and I can easily play. It's like a universal language. Universal Basic, Com speak, and all that. So initiative in Battletech. We know how important it is to win initiative. We know how that is key to giving you um, positioning on the table. It, it is literally the difference between we're engaging on one little small area on the hex map or the gaming table, you know, two mechs on two mechs or one mech on one mech. If I, lose initi if, if I win initiative and I'm close enough to you, I will be getting behind your mech unless you back up against a building or, or a hill or the edge of the table or something like that. So initiative is key. Being able to manipulate initiative is key. And by manipulate, I don't mean cheat. I mean influence within the rules. Maybe you take an HQ truck. Maybe you take some other support things. But the easiest way to do this is to outnumber your opponent on there. Well, now as we throw down, you know, it's quality versus quantity. So now as we throw down more units, we're confined to battle value. You know, what's an average battle tech game? 6K, 8K, 12K, whatever it's going to be for your group. You could throw down more units, but you're not throwing down five atlases on there. You've got to, not if you want quantity, you're going to have to make some concessions, lower battle value. Now things are more vulnerable. A great way to circumvent all of that, infantry. Infantry. I'm a big fan of combined arms. I'm a big fan of three or four units that should be in every list, every collection. You should have, in my opinion... Battletech, you should have four stands of infantry. They can represent a lot of different things. And you should have delivery systems for them, whether that is a goblin, APC ground transport, or whether you're going to go air cav like with a Karnov. That's just, that will pay dividends in every mission, no matter where you go. Now, if it's something specific like city tech, infantry are beast. They're, they're just amazing, hiding and waiting and cover. They're a real pain. If you're out on an open field then they're a lot more challenging to play unless you go full mech or defensive. But taking multiple, this is where we get into house rules. If I take four or five or six stands of infantry, each one is an initiative point on there. If I lose the initiative, I can burn, I can say, okay, this infantry, whether I'm moving or even if I'm not moving, I can activate those infantry stands rather than my mechs up front, rather than those key critical units up front against you. It's insurance, and it's long-term insurance, even if I lose initiative. Now, a lot of players out there, we've looked at it on the forums, and I can understand your point of view. I don't know, command and control is kind of gaming the system a little bit, and some people have come up with house rules of having all your infantry move in one phase. Some people have come up with a sub-phase, in infantry where much like um, air support 
this idea where or artillery it happens you know in a separate phase or maybe like physical attacks happens after the shooting phase so you could be shot down before you get to punch or charge in there possibilities again but not something that i particularly want to look at or challenge just for the sake of the universal integration on there but getting infantry in as an initiative sink understanding the importance of initiative vital 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 and very very important especially as the game moves on 